What's up guys? I am grateful that you are here. Thank you for joining me today. On the last video, we made this really cool bowstring jig. In today's video, we are going to make a Flemish twist string while using this jig. We're gonna find out all the ins and outs and how to set it up properly. Also, we're gonna see how to find the right length of bowstring that you need for the length of bow that you have. And then also at the end, I wanna give you guys a really cool tip on the best way to serve your bowstring. So let's get right into it. There are two main reasons we use a bowstring jig. The first one is the speed. It makes it so much faster. We only have to measure once, and that's when we set up the bowstring jig. The rest of the times, we just move that dowel to the corresponding number, and bam, you're ready to make your bowstring. The second reason we use a bowstring jig is so that all of our tag ends at the end are all staggered. That's what all those dowels real close together are there for. Now you can accomplish this without a bowstring jig, but if you're gonna make more than one bowstring, I'd recommend making a bowstring jig. If you made the same bowstring jig I did, you can just use my numbers here. If yours is a different size, you're gonna wanna do these calculations. So I measured out what dowel hole corresponds with what string length. And how you do that is you wanna measure from the bottom left dowel up there to the top left dowel. And that for me was 24 inches. Now you're gonna wrap the string around that side and the other side, so you need that times two. And then you're also gonna go around the top left dowel and the top middle dowel, and that's gonna be times two as well. You're gonna add all those numbers together, and that's gonna give you the length of strands you're gonna get for that first dowel hole. And now that we've got the length of the strands, we need to figure out how long of a bowstring this will actually make. Here I had 58 inches on my strands, and so the numbers we need to do is we need a negative 17 inches from the full strand length. How that breaks down is eight inches on both loops, so eight minus eight, and then we're gonna negative another one inch for the twist we're gonna put into the string. So my bundle of 58 strands is gonna turn out for me a 51 inch bowstring. So to make it simple, all you have to do is minus 17 inches off of the total length of your strands, and that'll be the size of bowstring you will get in the end. And for my bowstring jig, I've got the adjustment dowel rods one inch apart. This means that it's gonna add two inches to each string, each hole I go back. So my first hole's 41 inches. You can see here, I did the math, and the second hole is gonna be 43 inches. The next one's gonna be 45, 47, 49, and so on. And if the length of bowstring you need does not fall exactly where one of these dowel holes is, it's no problem at all. It's extremely easy to remedy, so I'm gonna show you that here in a minute. Now the bowstring jig that we made in the last video goes from 41 inches all the way up to a 71 inches. So this is gonna cover nearly every single bow that you might possibly have or want to make. Now take a deep breath, because that's the only math you have to do, and you'll never have to do it again now that your bowstring jig is set up. We now need to figure out what length of string you need. Now whether you made your own bow or bought a bow, this process works the exact same. You're gonna measure from knock point to knock point, and then you're gonna subtract three inches from that amount, and that's gonna get you to the amount you need. In my case, I needed a 56 inch string. Now I did not have a dowel hole for that. So if your string falls on a half inch or on an inch that you do not have a dowel hole for, just go to the nearest dowel hole that is larger. You don't wanna make it smaller, but you can make it larger, and it will be really easy to end up with the correct length of string that you want. Today, we are making a 12-strand string, which is probably the most common. It pretty much fits all common knock sizes, and that's kind of why you want that thickness of the string. So how we're gonna accomplish that is we're gonna make two bundles of six and twist those together to get our 12 strand string. And the string board is used to quickly form these two bundles of six strands. I started by tying the string off on the bottom left dowel and I wrap it until I have six strands. Now you will count seven strings going across the middle here and that will mean you've got six strands. Trust me, just count them. And the next step is to cut the strands right up in between the middle of those dowels. This is what gives us that staggering effect and gives us an awesome taper off of the loops that we're going to make. 
Now all you've got to do is repeat this process a second time and then you'll have your two bundles of six strands. In order to keep your strands together, you're going to want to use some wax. Now you don't want to use just any bowstring wax, you want to use bow maker's wax. I believe it has much higher beeswax in it and it's activated by heat. So as you rub your hand along the string, it makes all six of those strands stick together really well and makes the bowstring making process much easier. Continue this process for your second strand of six. I personally like to use a different color because I think it gives the string really nice contrast, but it's completely unnecessary. You can use one solid color or 12 different colors, really whatever you want. Another thing you're gonna wanna gather while making your bowstring is some clamps or little alligator clips, clothespins, paper clips, whatever it is, just to hold the bowstring in place as you twist it. It makes life so much easier. I use the dowel holes up the middle as my measuring tape since I know each dowel hole is one inch apart and it makes it really easy. So I measure out eight holes so that I can have eight inches to start my first loop. And that's where I put my clamp. And now it is time to start our Flemish twist. It's actually very simple. All you have to do is twist the string to the right and then pull it over the top, twist the next string to the right, pull it over the top. And so you're just twisting the strands in one direction, but twisting the bundle of strands in the opposite direction. And this is what makes the awesome Flemish twist string. The size of the loop you end up making is gonna be completely dependent on the size of the knocks on your bow. For most longbows, two inches is a good starting point for the size of the knock loop, especially for the bottom loop. Because the bottom loop we're going to make is going to definitely be smaller than the top because that one stays there all the time, but the, the top loop we slide up and down when we string the bow. So I'll make the bottom loop about two inches and then the top loop I'm going to make about three. Once you've got the string long enough for the loop size you want, it's time to twist it together. I put the green on green and the black on black, but it doesn't really matter. The idea is that you join the strings and you start the Flemish twist to make the loop. And so twist the strands to the right, and bring the whole string over the top. And you continue that down until you are past all your strings. This is where that taper comes into play. It's really nice that it slowly tapers out the thickness of your string. Once you get past all of the tag ends of your string, I do an extra 10 twist, hard twist, just to make sure that it holds tight there. At this point, it's a good idea to put your loop over something solid and give it a really good tug. This will set all those twists in and keep it from unraveling. Now that completes the first loop, and this bowstring is looking awesome, but we got a little problem we have to fix. Since we twisted the string, the rest of the string has twist in it. So we've got to even that out and twist it back to straight. But we got to go beyond straight so that when we make the second loop, the strings end up straight. And so this is called back twist. And this is not something you want to miss while you're making your bowstring. You normally need to put in about 20 twists of back twist and that'll be good for about every string loop that's eight inches long. In order to untwist your string, just start up by the clamp and do one bundle at a time and work your way back until it's all straight. And then you can just, when you get back to the end, you can just twist it up 20 times and you should be good to start on your second loop. In order to find where you need to start your second loop, measure your string out to where you want your finished distance and then add half an inch and put the clamp right there and that's where you should start your second loop. Then repeat the process as you did on the first loop. Just remember you might want to make this loop a little bit bigger than the first one for the top limb. All right, we are almost done with this string. I just trim up some of the tag ends and then I twist the full string just to give it a little bit of twist. And then I check my distance. When we started, we set out to get a 56 inch string and it looks like we nailed it. Now, if your string does not come out exactly where you want it, all you've got to do is twist the string tighter to make it shorter or opposite, twist the string a little looser to make the string longer. And it should be close enough that you can get the string length you want. The very last step 
is to rub some bowstring wax all along the whole string and just rub your hand on there so the wax melts into the string and it'll make it one cohesive unit. Then to string your bow, throw the big string over to the top loop first and then the little string on the bottom loop. And then you can go ahead, put your hand on the handle, slide it up, and boom, there you go, a strong bow. That's all there is to it to make an awesome Flemish twist bow string. Now all we've got left is to put the serving on. You're gonna wanna start the serving just below the handle area and work your way up past your knocking point so that the arrow can knock on the serving and then also if the string slaps against your arm it'll be along the area where the serving is rather than just the bare string. Pull out about an inch and a half of serving and point it towards the direction of the arrow rest and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna wrap over top of that piece of serving all the way up until you get past the arrow rest area and then you're gonna make a big loop and pass the serving through that 15 times. And after that serving is passed through your big loop 15 times, you're gonna bring that back over top of the serving you already did. Then, as you continue to serve the string, it's gonna unwind the string you just passed through the loop and it's gonna become a knotless knot. And so once it's all the way round up, just pull the extra string through and then cut it off right there and you are done. I think this bowstring turned out really good and I hope yours does too. Thanks for watching.